So hello all of you wrestling fans, this is my Q&A questions and answers, answers part 15. I've been away with this kind of videos, videos for a while, I'm back now, I'm trying to make more of them. I like doing these videos and I like your questions and I like to interact with you. Uh, I'm gonna pick up some really old questions here. At the end of this video I will urge you all to contribute to a future video of mine and I will continue to make this... Um, to make you pay attention to it in upcoming videos as well. It has to do with heel wrestlers. Uh, but the questions... This is a really old question, as you might understand by some par part of it, but it's still relevant. Uh, Cutter59, hey, I got two questions for you. What did you think of that promo Brian Danielson did on N NXT? That wasn't exactly yesterday. I thought it was awesome. It felt so really intense that promo proves that Daniel Bryan has a very bright future in the WWE, which he indeed had, because he's doing great in the WWE right now. Also, I ha have you heard the rumor? that Michael Cole might become the GM of Raw and what do you think if he did? I think this was before this computer was um, added and intermixed with the WWE Raw anonymous inter uh, general, general manager uh, and then he sent yet another question have you heard the rumor that Michael Cole might become the GM of Raw and what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, there is a lot of rumors of Michael Cole possibly becoming the general manager and um, I don't think he is the guy sending the emails if that's the question. Um, who is it then? I don't know. Could be just about anybody and I don't want to speculate because as I've said in another video it could be just about anybody and it's not even sure that WWE has decided on whom it is and even if it's, it's it is someone right now it could be just about anyone else and if Michael Cole was sending was the was the GM that means he's the guy sending the emails to himself and he could he really do that while sitting there on the commentary someone said yeah maybe he uses his phone I don't think so but it could also be that that he reads from a blank screen or but, but the fans behind him should see that so maybe he just has some text but he doesn't really read that text he just mimics and make, makes words up and, and pretends to read from the screen it could be uh, and Michael Cole is pretty over he's getting more entertaining I must say as a character though he's still a dork so not much has changed there uh, some people speak, spoke about it could be Zack Ryder due to the interaction with Edge. Um, maybe it's different GMs every week. Bret Hart is a speculation, Vince, but according to the WWE, he just woke up from a coma, or was that a dream? Uh, it could be, as I said, just about anybody. It could be a shocker, it could be a wrestler, it could be Triple H, it could be Stephanie. Some people suggest that it was a female due to the computer voice sounding like a female, but that wasn't even a clue. Uh, Mr. Diva Lover uh, has another retrospective uh, uh, question from a ret retrospective perspective. Uh, I have a question for you next Q&A segment. Do you think that the WWE is going to have Rikishi as the guy that attacked The Undertaker? We remember that Rikishi attacked Stone Cold who ran him over in 2000, I think it was. But no, it wasn't Rikishi, it was Kane, but it could have been Rikishi if totally made it that to work. But on the other hand, why would that be Rikishi? And no, I never thought it was Rikishi, and it wasn't Rikishi. Now he has another very, very, very interesting question that considers numbers in the WWE. WWE stocks are down 7%, WWE pay-per-view pay buy rates are down this year, and tickets to WWE events are down as well, WrestlingEdge.com, PWA.com, Wrestling Inc. Etc. Had McMahon commented on WWE stocks down 7%, pay per view buys dropped to 100,000 buys. I don't think that happened actually. Uh, so, what are your thoughts on WWE stocks, pay per views, ticket events? Do you think WWE is in trouble because the old teens and adults who have jobs are investing their money into UFC rather than the WWE? And that's a very, very good question. A very eloquent question and very well rhetoric rhetorically put forward and put through question. I think, of course, if, if there are people investing in UFC rather than the WWE and if people all in all rather invest 
in something else than the WWE and there is no one else left investing in the WWE, that's a problem. And so of course it's a problem that UFC right now is a bigger organization that draws more money, more views, viewers, more buys, more interest than the WWE. Uh, that's a problem, I don't say that it's a problem to me or people liking wrestling necessarily, but it's a problem to the WWE as a company, as a business. Uh, I, don't, I don't have that much information on the tickets. I think they're still doing pretty good there. The the pay-per-view buys, though, I compared the 2008 to 2009 pay-per-views. 2009 was where they had a lot of new pay-per-view branded with different themes. And significant from last year was that SummerSlam and Survivor Series lost somewhere between 20 to 25 percent of their buys from 2008 to 2009 that's a lot of you that's about one fifth to one fourth of each person that bought the paper in 2008 didn't return to do that in 2009 as Royal Rumble was down as well uh, WrestleMania had dropped slightly breaking point didn't did a catas catastrophic buy rate and I understand because it was a pretty good pay-per-view but they didn't bring it back so I guess it had to do with that buy rate though they had some interesting new concepts like Extreme Rules was well they haven't used that actually name for a while but that pay-per-view went, went up and Hell in a Cell went up Bragging Rights and TLC that's the last pay-per-view of the year TLC and Bragging Rights the third last they did great numbers. They almost both of them almost went up 20 percent, and with Hell in a Cell also going up, WWE ended the 2009 year very strong with three of four pay-per-views actually increasing in buys to the year before. So they made profit in comparison, and then they actually continued that that route with Royal Rumble actually going up from 2009. It had went down from 2008 till 2009 and they almost picked that back in this year 2010 Elimination Chamber went up strongly as well then came the somewhat pretty big 10% drop for WrestleMania 26 that raised a lot of eyebrows now WWE has raised the the, the price for ordering the pay-per-use so even though they might drop they still uh, make, made perhaps the same money I don't say that as a way to condone that they lost buyers and viewers purchasers purchasers for the pay-per-view because that's still a bad sign if you go down it's never good of course you are always gonna want to at least stay at the same level that you were before or advance and go up get more viewers get more interest get more money get bigger arenas and whatever then came I believe Extreme Rules did somewhat good but then the the slope started with or the limit crap tacular virus I don't remember the number the uh, and then the fatal four way and what surprised me the money in the bank this is so very much hype match for WrestleMania the match that I can't see any wrestling fan disliking it bombed catastrophical rating for the pay-per-view it I think it dropped almost 40%, 35% from the Night of Champions pay-per-view that was in July in 2009. SummerSlam, it dropped but not significantly. Night of Champions in September grew about the same as Breaking Point, uh, which was a very bad number from last year compared to 2008. So as you see, it's up and down. Right now, W has been somewhat down uh, or at the same level. They had a very bad period from... April to July and WWE hoped that SummerSlam would turn that around. It didn't do that. So we'll still have to see what happens. Also people have asked me what do you think happens between Wade Barrett and David Otunga? Uh, I think that has to do with what happens at Survivor Series. If Wade Barrett wins, it's all good and fine. If he loses, we all know what happens psychologically inside of a group when the group fails. And they look for scapegoat. And WWE does that very good. These group group psychological dynamics of groups. After SummerSlam, WWE lost 
they blamed it all on Darren Young, kicked him out and everything, everything was fine. And Barrett is now becoming obsessed with becoming champion, hence he pushes to win the title, which disturbs David Otanga. And if Barrett doesn't win, I believe we could see something go on between Otanga and Barrett. And that, and that feud and that frenzy will come to a whole new level. So it has to do with what happens at Survivor Series. Then, this, I, I, people are tell me, told me, what is a real heel? What is a real heel? And he isn't a real heel, and this guy is a real heel. Please send me, I want to make a video, what is the top 20 b best signs of a good wrestling heel? What is the top best 20 signs of a great wrestling heel? Send me these and I'll make a video about it. Thank you.